Lord, don't let me fail you. I want to be your bride. When my way grows dark, walk right by my side. When my eyes grow dim, Lord, let me see something in my life thou hast done for me. Lord, don't let me fail you. I want to be your bride. When my way grows dark, walk right by my side. When my eyes grow dim, Lord, let me see something in my life thou hast done for me. Lord, don't let me fail you. I want to be your bride. When my way grows dark, walk right by my side. When my eyes grow dim, Lord, let me see something in my life thou hast done for me. Lord, don't let me fail you. I want to be your bride. When my way grows dark, walk right by my side. When my eyes grow dim, Lord, let me see something in my life thou has done for me. Well, God bless you. Good morning, Sister Riley. Good morning, Bailey. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you, Sister Stimson. God bless you, Sister Cheek. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. God bless you. God bless you, Miriam. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Deacon Davis. God bless you and Mother Davis. Good morning, Duchess. God bless you. Good morning, Mother Walker. Good morning, Geneva. Good morning, Jeannie. God bless you. Good morning, Lady Holden. God bless you and Bishop. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Valencia. God bless you. Good morning, Dr. Haywood. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Jacobs. God bless you. Sister Miriam. Good morning, Blossom. God bless you. Pastor and Lady Alde. Praise the Lord for you. Good morning. Sister Cooper, God bless you. Sylvia Green, good morning to you. God bless you. Katrina, God bless you. Mother Morris, God bless you. Iris, praise the Lord. Rita, God bless you. Good morning, Tanya. God bless you. Brother Moore, praise the Lord to you. God bless you. Sister Wilson Robinson, God bless you. Sister Pedlar. Missionary Johnson, God bless you. Thank God for you. Good morning, Sister Chambliss. God bless you. Sister Hooten, praise the Lord. Sister Rosa, God bless you. Sister Joyner, praise the Lord. Lenora, God bless you. Sister Saunders, good morning. Good morning, Shakita. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Reed. Good morning, Lashana. I pray you had a great birthday yesterday. God bless you, Mother Meadows. Good morning, Tiana. God bless you, Sister Carter. Praise the Lord, Pastor Hargrove. Grace and peace to you, sir. God bless you. You. God bless you, Sister Giles, Sister Walker. Good morning, Terry. God bless you, Sister Angela, Sister Robertson. God bless you, Janie. God bless you, Katina. Praise the Lord to you. God bless you, Mother Davis. Thank God for you and Deacon. God bless you, Sister Worthy. God bless you. Praise the Lord, Sister Polk. Well, praise the Lord and good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness and see and hear the testimonies of what God is doing as a result of prayer. I'm praising God today. This is the first Friday. And so this is the Region 5 Friday that we um, spend time sharing normally with our regional apostle, Apostle Raymond J. Keith. And I want to send his greetings, greetings on his behalf, and send um, his prayers to all of you and to let you know that he is doing better. He has been rather sick, but God is touching his body. God is healing him. His strength is coming back, and he's just about ready to come back to the line and begin ministering. But he asked for us to indulge him one more month, give him time to, and, and I've watched the Aggression. He is doing better, and I'm thanking God for healing, but I want us to keep praying for him that God would completely restore his strength because he's a vital, active man of God, and we want him able to do the things that God has put into his heart, the vision God has given him for Region 5, and so we want to salute everybody on the line this morning that's a part of Region 5 that includes North Carolina, and we thank God for Bishop Robert Terry and Mother Avoya Terry of the Metropolitan Diocese 
Texas, North Carolina. We want to salute Bishop Philip Calloway and Mother Calloway and thank God for the West Virginia Diocese and to all the saints of God in Kentucky. We want to thank God for all of you and to all the saints in the Leeward Islands Diocese. We thank God for you. To all the saints in the Ecclesia Diocese, we thank God for you. And God is certainly blessing Region 5. And we just thank God for the leadership. We thank God for all of the pastors and the churches that make up Region 5. And we thank God, hallelujah, for our regional apostle and his lovely companion, Mother Joan Keefe. So continue to pray for Apostle Raymond Keefe. Keep praying for Mother Joan Keefe. He is doing better. We thank God, hallelujah, for what the Lord has done in his life. And God is strengthening him in Jesus' name. So as always, if you have a prayer request, please place it into the chat if you're on Facebook, or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can add your prayer request to the comment section, or you can direct message Pastor RJD. Pastor RJD. And if you're on the conference call line this morning, and thank God for all of you, you can certainly text. You can text your prayer request to 336 567 5358. That's 336 567 5358. You can text your prayer request, and once again, we'll add them to the prayer book and we'll continue to believe God for what we know God is able to do. Let's go to the word. We were opening up the book of Titus, and so I want us to continue there. Titus chapter number one. Titus chapter number one. And I want you to consider with me verses 4 through 9. Titus chapter 1 verses 4 through 9. The Bible says to Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause I left thee in Crete that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he have been taught, that he may be able to, by sound doctrine, to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. I want to talk to you again this morning from the subject qualified for purpose. Qualified for purpose. Paul is opening this letter to um, Titus, and Titus is a beloved son, very much after the same order of Timothy. Godly man, a righteous man, a man that God was using in, in pastoral leadership and in the oversight of other churches. And for that reason, the Bible says, and Paul clearly makes it clear that he left him in Crete. Crete being a very challenging assignment. You know, everything that God gives us is not easy. Everything that God commissions us to do is not easy. Some of us have what I would best describe as challenging assignments. Places and purposes and, and, and jobs that God has given us to do that are not always easy. That require character. That require um support that require um, tenacity in order to face. And it sounds like that Crete was such a place, a challenging place, a challenging assignment. And he lays out to him what the charge is, what the assignment is, that he, first of all, ordain elders in every city, that he's, in other words, he has to develop ministry in the city because ministry is has always been a collaborative effort. And no matter how gifted or talented or anointed um, a leader is, a leader cannot do what he does alone. 
Woman of God cannot do what she does alone. If you're going to do the work of God, there has to be some level of collaboration. There has to be some level of cooperation. And you will sometimes find yourself doing the work of God through the people that God has assigned to you. And that's exactly what Paul was doing to Titus and what Titus would do on the island of Crete. He would commission people. And he identified um, the Lord through Paul, identified qualifications qualifications, that he must be blameless, can't be somebody always accused of doing something underhanded or ungodly or unrighteous, but he has to live a blameless life. He must be the husband of one wife. Fidelity to your marriage is critical for those of us that will lead in the body of Christ. You cannot be a player, hallelujah, and serve in the kingdom. You cannot be a Casanova. You cannot be a loose person uh, morally and, 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 and sexually if you're going to do the work of God. Having faithful children. And children are a reflection of our faithfulness. Hallelujah. Sometimes our kids come at different seasons. Sometimes they don't come right away. Sometimes they come and stray. But if you've been faithful, you are living under God's promise to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I need to pause here because some of you have children that right now are outside of the ark of safety. I am believing God with you that the seed that you have planted in your sons, in your daughters, are going to come to fruition. You don't need to be discouraged, even if right now they're not where they need to be and not where you want them to be. Keep them on the altar in prayer. Keep them before the Lord. Keep keep calling their name out to God, believing that God is going to touch their heart and bring them to salvation. He says for the bishop, he again repeats himself that the bishop has to be blameless, that he is the steward of of God. I shared this yesterday that the steward is not an owner. And one of the worst things a church leader can do is to pretend that they own what belongs to God. I can't pretend that I own the church. I can't pretend that I own the people. They're not my people. I did not die for anybody. I did not bleed on a cross for anybody. The Bible says he has purchased a church with his own blood. It was Jesus that bought my salvation. It was Jesus that bought your salvation. And so we can never pretend that we own our corner of the world. We have assignments, we have responsibilities, we have jobs, but we have been placed as stewards over those jobs, meaning we have accountability to God for what we do with what he has entrusted in us, but it was never ours. It will never be ours. It will always belong to God, but I am accountable for my service to God. I am accountable for my work to God, even though it is is not mine. I cannot be self-willed. Oh my God, here's this, th this, this thing keeps coming up about self. Paul talked about it in 2 Timoth Timothy when he talked about men being lovers of their own selves. And here he comes again in Titus talking about the self-will. Oh my God, you know the, the biggest struggle, if I can be honest, of every believer is surrendering your will to the will of God. The biggest struggle of every son, every daughter of God, every minister, every everyone that serves in the kingdom is when do we surrender our will to the will of God? Because your will always wants something. Your will always wants to do what it wants to do. And, and that's really the battle that most believers fight. The greatest battle that you fight as a believer is surrendering your will to the will of God. You fight that battle because your will has its own ideals, its own ambitions, its own thoughts, its own desires. But here is the will of God that is ultimately going to bless you your life and ultimately going to favor your life, but we always struggle in thinking that we know more than God knows, that we can do more than God can do, that we can set out on a course greater than what God has given us. But I need everybody to bring your minds together and say, Lord, I want to be in your will. We're entering the Lenten season and we're the time of the passion of the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ as we remember 
mirror and reflect upon that, I always go to Gethsemane because it's in Gethsemane that we see the struggle between the humanity of Christ and the deity of Christ. That here was Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, knowing the manner of death that he would die, knowing that he would suffer and bleed upon a cruel cross, knowing he would be tortured, oh God, and ridiculed for the sake of the humanity for which he was dying. And so he goes into Gethsemane, the Bible says, and while he's in Gethsemane, and while he's there, hallelujah, praying, the Bible says, praying so hard until his sweat dripped as drops of blood. And his prayer was simply, Father, if it be possible for this cup to pass from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Be, be honest, Jesus Christ did not want to die. He loved humanity. He wanted humanity to be redeemed. He wanted humanity to, 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 to be able to have access to the kingdom of God. He wanted all men to be saved, but that part of his, of his humanity, the same part that is in you, has self-preservation. He did not want to die, did not want to suffer, but yet he surrenders. Oh my God, it says, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And the time comes for you, the time comes for me, the time comes for every believer when you have to lay yourself on the altar and say to the Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. I don't want to go through this. I don't want to face this. I don't want to endure this particular trial, this particular burden. But Lord, if this is what it takes for your will to be fulfilled, for your will to be manifested, for your will to be, hallelujah, oh God, put across, then Lord, not mine, but yours. And that's the testimony of every one of us that will be the servant of Jesus Christ, not my my will, but yours, not my plan, but yours, not my purpose, but yours, not my destiny, but yours. Lord, I want your will to be manifested in my life. The, the servant of God, the bishop, the leader, the person who's going to work in the kingdom cannot be self-willed. He cannot be soon angry. Oh God, you have to have you have to have a, a level of control of, over your emotions. You can't let your temper flare to the point of, 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 of outward emotions and anger and cursing and screaming. You can get angry. The Bible says be angry and sin not. But he doesn't. But he says sin not. Don't go off. Don't snap. Don't lose your character. Don't lose the character of Christ in the midst of your anger not given to wine. You can't be a drinker. You can't be a striker not given to filthy lucre. You have to be a trustworthy person that the resources of the house of God have to be used for the house of God. Yes, there's a responsibility to care for those that will labor. The laborer is worthy of the hire, but the pastor is not a pimp. Let me say it again. The pastor is not a pimp. The bishop is not, hallelujah, somebody that uses things for his own devices. Hallelujah. He should be cared for. The woman of God should be provided for. they needs should be met, but not to the point of, of, of overindulging and just buying and having and doing, but with a level of humility, knowing that God needs the resources and he, he needs you to handle the resources rather in a way that brings glory to God. You can't be greedy. I love this last phrase. My, my time is winding up here. He says, a lover of hospitality. Some people are hospitable, but you know they don't love doing it. Oh yeah, they'll, they'll feed you. They'll, they'll take care of you. They'll give you a ride. They might even give you a place to stay, but you know they don't want to do it. But when you're a lover of hospitality, you want to be a blessing to the people. When you're a lover of hospitality, you want to be someone that gives and shares. When you're a lover of hospitality, you want to do it to the glory of God because you love doing it. A lover of good men. Oh God, we can't emphasize enough the need for love to permeate leadership, the need for love to permeate the mindset of people. And I'm going to say this, it's not enough for the bishop to show this, but everybody that labors in the body of Christ should reflect these attributes. Hallelujah. The lover of hospitality, sober, I'm serious about the things of God, just, I'm fair-minded, holy, I'm righteous and living for God, temperate, I'm 
self-controlled. Hallelujah. I'm not losing it. I'm not flying off the handle. I'm not losing my temper at the drop of a hat, but living this life of love, holding fast or laying hold or having a firm grip, hallelujah, on the faithful word of God. That's how I'm able to live this qualified life because I'm holding on to the word. I believe in the word. I believe in what the word says. I believe in what the word commands us to do and I'm doing what I can by the grace of God to live by that holy word. He says holding on to that faithful word that he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine. Hallelujah. By sound doctrine that he might be able to exhort and convince. My job, my job, my job. I've learned this now that one of my primary jobs is to share this word, to teach this word, but also to minister to the needs of people so they can embrace this word and not be given to false teachings, not be given to dishonest, but to literally to win families, to win souls, to exhort and convince even the gainsayers, even those folk that for some reason are outside of the ark of safety, even the false teachers, but to be able to confront sin with the word and the love of God to help those to understand the power of this faithful word. This word is so faithful. I got to close, but the word of God, if you practice, it. The word of God, if you live by it, the word of God, if you hold to it, will affect change in anybody's life. I believe that to the core of my being, that if you start living by the word, walking in the word, abiding in the word, you will see the word work, hallelujah, on your behalf. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Let's be qualified for the purpose that God has laid upon our lives. Let's be qualified for the purpose that God has laid upon our lives. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious, eternal God, I love you. Thank you for grace, mercy, peace. Thank you for, Lord, all that you do for us. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for your mercy today. It's of your mercy that we are not consumed because your compassion fails not, but it's made new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, you're a faithful God. You're a consistent God. You're a steadfast God that stands with us in every nuance of life, every trial, every test every struggle. God, you remain faithful to us. And my God, we remain grateful to you. We hold you, Bashanama, oh God, in high esteem and reverence because you are God. We love you and we adore you. And we ask you now in the name of Jesus, my God, if you would bless Ishanama, oh God, every heart and mind. Thank you for those who have joined us this morning in prayer. Thank you, my God, for every son, every daughter that's on this prayer line, on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, my God, on conference call, I thank you for them now. And I trust you and believe, my God, that you are the God that is able. Thank you for sustaining us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for provision daily. And thank you, God, because you continue to hold us in your hand. God, I'm praying for every petition that is before you from your sons and daughters, that you would grant them in the name of Jesus. Oh, that you would open up heaven for your sons, for your daughters, that you would grant my God the petitions. I pray your grace to be extended today. I pray your mercy to be extended today. I pray your righteousness to be extended today. Somebody's bound. Somebody's bound. This morning, somebody's bound. Somebody's interceding for someone who is bound, lost their way, struggling now. But I trust you, my God, in the name of Jesus, to step in, to open the door. Oh God, to strengthen, 
to deliver, to break the chains of the enemy, and to save my God to the utmost. God, I'm praying today for every name that is on the prayer list, every name that's in the prayer book, every name that's been submitted by messenger or chat or text or email that God, you would touch and you would deliver. My God, as only you can. God, we're praying today for so many souls that stand in need of deliverance today. We're praying, my God, for unsaved family everywhere. God, you're the Savior, and you save to the utmost. We're praying, my God, for the Ukraine. My God, we're praying, hallelujah, for Europe today. Oh, God, we watch, hallelujah, with deep concern, the happenings, oh, God, in that, oh, God, tiny country. Oh, God, the aggression that's been put against it now, but we're praying for you to fight on behalf of the Ukraine. We're praying for you to stand, oh, God, with these precious people. We're praying, my God, for Matt and Jill, who are in Europe right now, that you would cover and protect them and keep them in the name of Jesus Christ. God, that you would sustain them and cover them in your precious blood. My God, I'm praying for the Emmanuel Temple Church family. I'm praying for Bishop and Lady Forehand. I'm praying for Malcolm, for Maya. I'm praying for Mother Sadie Hudson. I'm praying for Barbara and Brenda Parker, for Michelle. Hallelujah, Sanchez. I'm praying for Candace. I'm praying, my God. Hallelujah, for James Jr. I'm praying for Ali Harrell. I'm praying for Jerry, that you would lift his spirits today. I'm praying for the Michael family. I'm praying for Ina Chandler, for the Desire family, for the Jackson family, for Rahima Hill, for Jamie Moore, for Karen, for Lionel. We're praying for Kenneth today. We're praying for Kelvin, for Juliet. We're praying for those battling alcoholism. We're praying for those battling drug addiction. God, we know you're a deliverer. We're praying for the homeless this morning. We're praying for Alonzo Anthony, God. We're praying for Sherrod Smith, for Larry James, for Mitch, for Miles. We're praying for Raven, for Rebecca. We're praying for the Whitley family, the Williams family, the Austin family. We're praying for Evelyn Johnson today, for Devin, for Charles, for Shanette, for Joe, for Stephen, for Pauline, for Patricia, for Todd, for Keith, for Kenneth, for Carolyn. We're praying for Robert, for Siobhan, for Sarah, for Skylar. We're praying for Barbara Dews today. We're praying for Sarah. We're praying for Cammy. oh God, and the Gates family. We're praying for the Johnson family, the Perkins family, the Little family, the Robinson family, the Matthews family. We're praying for those who are in military service. My God, cover them. We're praying for Tammy, oh God, for Tommy rather, and Tamara. We're praying for Nancy and Barbara. We're praying for Stacy and, Sh and Travon today. Lord, deliver them in the name of Jesus. We're praying for the Grays family, the Hill family. We're lifting up Sister Webb today. Everybody on this line, even the unspoken request, God, Lord, stretch out your hand to deliver, to heal. Lord, stretch out your hand to make whole. Stretch out your hand to comfort God in the name of Jesus and God bring a mighty deliverance. Lord, we're lifting up the sick today. We're praying for Carlos Wright. We're praying for Bishop Greg Wilder, for Bishop Willie Wilder. We're praying for Bishop Leroy Joseph, for Tanel Bethea. We're praying for Mother Barbara Davis today. We're praying for K.R. Hoots. Oh God, we're praying, my God, for Joyce Domingo. We're praying for Tevin Robinson, for Jimmy, for Jean. We're praying, oh God, for Victor today. We're praying for Francis. We're praying for that baby Marlon today. God, touch in the name of Jesus. We're praying for Lee Spivey this morning. We're lifting up Bishop Alfonso Brooks, my God. We're praying for Mother Shirley Clark. We're praying for Mother Evangeline Jenkins today. God, we're lifting up, my God, Lady Andrea Maxwell. God, we're praying for Brother Wiggins. We're praying for Brother and Mother Sherrod, Deacon and Mother Garland today. God, we lift up, oh God, Pastor Jackson today. We lift up, my God, Pastor Carl. We pray for Elder Tyson, Elder Smith. Lord, send your healing touch now in the name of Jesus. We're praying everywhere, God, for people who are suffering. Oh, God, we're praying for Mother Foster, Henry J., and Brother Cliff. God, let your healing virtue prevail. My God, I'm praying today. Oh, hallelujah for Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman. I'm praying today, God, for Missionary Simmons. Lord, let your healing virtue flow in our midst. God, I'm praying and I'm believing and trusting you, God. Oh, God, for healing upon, oh, God, Catherine and Cynthia and Duchess. My God, let your healing virtue prevail. I'm praying for Jeremiah this morning. Lord God, because I know that you are a healer, so touch now by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm praying today for Marlette. Oh, God, for Maurice. I'm praying today for Chris, for Tony. God, you're a healer, so let your healing virtue flow into every hospital, into every ICU ward, COVID ward, cancer ward, dialysis 
this unit, every nursing home, every rehab center, God. Let your healing virtue flow into hospice, God, and turn it around because you're a healer now. We trust you and we believe you, God, even for the comfort of grieving people everywhere. We pray for their grace. We pray for their strength today. We pray for Surrett. We pray for Ash, the Ash family. We pray for the Wright family, for the Harrell family. We pray for the family of Melvin Peters. We pray for the Winfield family. We pray for Denise McLean, my God, and her family. Everybody everywhere, my God, that is dealing with the loss of a loved one, we lift them up before you. God, we pray for the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds. We pray, oh God, for the Carters. We pray for the Giles family. God, we lift up Garland and the Dockery family, Ebony and the White family. My God, we pray for Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. We pray for Margie and the McLean Melvin family. God, we lift up so many, oh God, that are suffering grief today. We pray, my God, hallelujah for Brenda and the Allen McNeely family. God, we pray, oh God, for the Ransom family. God, we pray today, hallelujah, oh God, for the Allen Williams family. We lift up Trell and Ryan. We pray today, God, for the Clark family. We lift up Tommy and Michelle. We pray for grieving people everywhere. The Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family, the Middletons, the Taylors, everybody that's dealing with a loss today, we hold up before you, God. We're praying today for the Felix family. We're praying, oh God, for the Sapatas. We're praying for the Mannix, the Boodrums, the Gleans, the Phillips family, the Arthur family. God, every family all over this planet, my God, that's grieving, we pray for them now. We pray for the churches and the pastors today of region. Region 5. Hallelujah. Oh God, we pray for them now that you would strengthen them. The pastors, the first ladies, the children, my God, the saints in the body of Christ, we pray for them. We pray for every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, every, my God, mother and missionary, every pastor's child, every young person in the church, every minister and deacon, God, every musician, singer, and psalmist. We pray for the whole body of Christ today. My God, that you would strengthen us to reflect your will, that you would strengthen us to live by your will, that you would strengthen us to walk in your will. God, help us, God, daily to live for you, to exemplify your character, that we might walk in our purpose. God, I'm praying for somebody that's been discouraged away from their purpose, that walked away from their call, that gave up their mantle. God, help them to pick it back up and to serve and to do what you have called them to do. I'm praying I'm praying today, I'm praying today, God, for the entire body of Christ. I'm praying today for first responders, essential workers everywhere, that you would help them, keep them, protect them. I'm praying for firemen, policemen, and EMTs, God. We're praying today, oh my God, we're praying today for students and school employees in every school around the world. God, comfort and cover them and protect them. We're praying for everybody that works to help another person. My God, that you would help them, that you would cover them, protect them in hospitals and clinics and offices and banks and stores. My God, keep them private duty employees. God, cover them now in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, oh God, over this Omicron variant. Oh God, such perilous times that we live in. But God, we're trusting you to heal the sick and to protect, my God, those who are uninfected. We're praying, oh God, that you would strengthen us. By God, put your hand in the Ukraine today and touch and deliver God. In the name of Jesus, God, strengthen the people. We lift up Apostle Keith today. We pray for Mother Keith today. We pray for their strength. We pray for their vitality. We pray, oh God, for their spiritual fortitude that you would cover and protect and strengthen them now. God, strengthen the people today. Bless the people today as only you can. And God, we give your name the glory. My God, cover us and heal the land. My God, heal the land of sin of violence, of sexism, of racism, of injustice, of prejudice, God. Lord, heal the land, my God, and bless the people today. And God, as you bless us, we give your name the glory, the honor, and all the praise. We love you today, God, and we honor you in this moment. And Lord, for all these things, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, Come on and give God praise. Everybody on this line, give the Lord praise. Thank him, love him, honor him. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Give him glory. 
Hallelujah. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is my confession this morning, my declaration. Not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Not my will, but thy will be done. Lord, I don't want to be willful. I don't want to walk in my will, in my pride, in my arrogance. I want your will to be done. Hallelujah. I want your will to be manifested. I want your will, my God, to be exalted. I want your will, hallelujah, to be exemplified in my life. Not my will, hallelujah, but thy will be done. Lord, let your will be wrought in my life. Hallelujah. Your purpose. Hallelujah. I want to live after your purpose, God, not my will. Thy will be done. God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. I'm trusting that this prayer has blessed you. Hallelujah. And that your Friday is off to a great start. You can stay connected with Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, on YouTube and Instagram, and you can access it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also access our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud and Spotify. And once again, it's available all day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 1130 a.m. on Gregory Gospel Dot com every day Monday through Friday at 11:30 a.m. on gregorygospel.com. I want to thank every single person that sees and sows to this ministry. This is the first Friday and on the first Friday we bless region 5. So I want to ask every one of you to give, all right, and to sow into region 5. If you send it here, we're going to send it there, all right? So everybody make a gift today. You can do that. You can send a check to Refuge Temple PO Box 35 52 Burlington, North Carolina, 27215, or you can give, or you can give electronically on our website. You can go to Refuge Temple in as in North, C as in Carolina.com and make your gift. You can go to Givelify and make your gift there, or you can use the Cash App, which is dollar sign the number one refuge. And once again, this is Region 5's offering. So if you give today, we're going to certainly send it on to Region 5. So make the gift, put in the notes, Region 5, and we'll make sure that it's given there. We want to strengthen the hands of Apostle Keith so that he is able to do. Do what he needs to do for the kingdom of God. He's a builder. He wants to help and support churches. And we want to make sure that the resources are at his disposal. So I'm giving today. I want you to give today. I want everybody on this line to sow something to Region 5 today so that we can be a blessing to the region. Bless them. Strengthen the hands of our regional apostle and the work of all of our churches in, in North Carolina, West Virginia, in the Leeward Islands, diocese, everywhere we want to strengthen their hands in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you today. Please, please, please keep praying one for the other. Keep praying for me. Keep praying for Lady Davis. Keep praying for um, my children. Keep praying for my dad. Keep praying for my sisters, my in-laws, my nieces, my nephews, our entire family. Just lift us up in prayer. Hold us in prayer. Keep praying for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless our church and strengthen us. And keep praying for everybody that's a part of this call every day, that God would help them and strengthen them, and God would bless every church that's a part of this connection. I thank you for being a part of prayer, and I want to ask you to keep spreading the word so that others can hear the word. Hallelujah. Be prayed for, be encouraged, because God is blessing so many people because we pray together each day. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Don't forget to be a blessing today to Region 5. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom. Shalom.